So we're gonna speak a lot about the period uh, that was from 1890s uh, till the 1940s mainly, that was late 19th century and early 20th century. So today we're gonna speak a lot about that period of the history of the city because that was the Belle Epoque of Buenos Aires. Most of the buildings that we're gonna see were made during that time. You know that Buenos Aires was a Spanish colony, it was made by the Spanish in the 16th century. Mm -hmm. And till the 19th century, when finally the city got independent, Argentina got independent from Spain, the city didn't grow much. It was just like a, a poor town without much importance, if you will compare with our cities in the Spanish Empire of those days, with, for right. example, Cusco, Mexico City, Cartagena. Those cities were way more important than Buenos Aires. So that's why the city didn't grow much during those the times of the During colonies. those times, okay, right. So, it started to grow just at the end of the 19th century and early 20th century, when the economy of the country started to grow, mainly based on the cattle industry, the exportation of cattle to Europe, and the exportation of grains as well. Ah. That was uh, how the economy was based in those days. Still today, eh? Okay. The, the, the cattle industry is still it's a big industry in the country. Anyway, so, uh, and this building is the example of one of the buildings that were made during that time, during the, the best era of the country, the, the Colón Theater, the Opera House of Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. It was designed by an Italian architect, called Francesco Caprini. Many Italians, later we're going to speak more about why, why, why we have a lot of Italians. Right, here, right, you know? right. Uh, Francesco Tamburini started to work on it in 1889, hired by the government of those days, to make not only this one, but also many public buildings. For example, the Opera House of Buenos Aires was finished by him. That's a building that later we're gonna we're gonna see. So you, you saw already. Yeah, we saw a little yeah. bit of the Opera House, right? That building was finished by him, yeah. by the okay. same architect. Who Got made it. This one. Right. So Tamburini started to work on it in 1889, and he died soon after. He died at 44 years old, well, quite young. So the government had to look for a second architect continue the works in the building. The second architect also was from Italy. Actually, he was a student of him. Ah. His name was Vittorio Meano. Okay. And Vittorio Meano at that time was working at the National Congress building at the same time, also hired by, by the government. And surprisingly, Vittorio Meano uh, neither could have finished this building. So he died before that oh at 44 God. years old. Oh my God! So he died quite young, at the same age as the first one. And this is the first one. Yeah. So that was a kind of course, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if you work on this building, you die at the age of 44. Here are the Porteños, the people from Buenos Aires. We are quite superstitious, and they saw you in the demolish the building for that reason because they they considered that there was a curse on the building. But finally, they took a better decision. That was continue with, with the building with the star architect brought another nationality older than 44 and that worked because <laughs> uh, he broke the, the curse he broke the curse <laughs> <laughs> his name was Jules Rumal okay Jules Rumal he was from Belgium okay and he was 52 years old when oh, he took okay. the building and finally he survived yeah he was he didn't <laughs> die at 44 yeah, he survived <laughs> he Finally, he finished with the building. Okay. And the building, uh, the Opera House was opened the 25th of May of 1908. So it took almost 20 years to be built. Right. Because of the different deaths of the different architects. So finally, it was opened 25th of May of 1908. Right. With the Opera Aida of Giuseppe Verdi. That was uh, the first show that we got. Okay. You. So the style of the architecture mm -hmm. that we got is an eclectic Italian style. That, that's why the decoration that we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the very top, for example, you can see that we got faces. Yes. That symbolize the comedy and the drama. One, one face is oh, laughing. Oh, yes. And the other one shouting. It symbolizes the comedy and the drama. Right, right. Uh, a little bit down, we got children yeah, and angels playing yeah. musical instruments. Right. In the middle part of the building, by the columns, we got musical instruments coming up from the wall. Yes. Flowers on the top of the column. So all this decoration was yes. originally designed by the first architect, by Tamburini, and was respected by the second one. All right. So another particularity that we have yeah. are these kind of windows that we have here on the floor. Mm. Here we can see the workshop of the theater. On the ground we got the, the workshops. Oh. Over here oh, yeah. they make the, the, the set for the stage. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, the, the cost of products also happens. Everything is made by the, the workers of the CNA the itself. So they don't need to hire other companies to do all the sets and the costumes. So, and it's a huge area because the workshops start in the middle of the, of the avenue, underneath the avenue. Mm -hmm. And also the way to the park that we got over there is La Valle Park. Okay. So wow. it's like twice as biggest as the building itself. So it's a huge area. Yes, yes. And uh, unfortunately, the area is close to the public. We cannot see properly. Okay. But uh, there's a kind of museum at La Boca neighborhood where you can see all the artifacts that they produce. You can see the costumes. Uh, everything is on display in that, in that building. Right. It's, in, it's called uh, Colón Fabrica. It's in La Boca neighborhood. Go from Caminito. Okay. Have you been there? In, okay? I don't think so. I recommend you because it's in the south part of the city. Okay. And it's basically the place where the tango was born. Oh, well, I'm so. going to see a tango to the, tonight. Oh, tonight? Yeah. All right. Tango Piazzola. 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 You know he, who was Piazzola? I have no idea. Piazzola. Piazzola. He was probably the best bandoneon player. Bandoneon is the instrument that is very characteristic. In Tango, oh. and he was, uh, in my opinion, he was the best. But okay. Some people consider he uh, is among the two best. Uh, Aníbal Troilo was his master, okay. and he was most more progressive. Oh, I he see. introduced electric guitar into the tango. He introduced a lot of jazz patterns. Okay. So that's why the old tango players didn't like him. Oh, okay. so he was the kind of Jimi Hendrix. Of yeah, Jimi <laughs> Hendrix of, of his time. All that's right. right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, so all now right. we are watching one of the sides of the building. So what we're gonna do yeah. is to head into the park once again, yeah. and we're gonna see the the front gate and the buildings that we got around the, the park. Okay, so let's, let's go do ahead. that. All right. yeah.